The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Isabel Gulo, and, and Isabel is the executive director and co-founder of Care for Paws. Welcome, Hi. Isabel. Hi, thank you for having me today. Yes, so I have seen your cute trucks driving all over town and I've always wondered what do those guys do anyway I mean I've heard that you have great services and all but I'd love to hear more about what Care for Paws does in our community. Yeah so Care for Paws is a nonprofit. we got started in 2009 with the goal to reduce pet overpopulation and keep pets from ending up in shelters. Oh. So we provide a big safety net of services to the community, so including the, the mobile clinics that you see driving around. Oh, is that what they are, mobile clinics? Mobile veterinary clinics, yes. Oh. Okay. So we provide free space and neuters, and uh, low cost or free veterinary care. We, pr we host regular vaccine clinics. Every time we're out with our mobile units, uh -huh. we host a walk-in vaccine clinic with low-cost vaccines and flea treatment, microchips, and all the basics that allow a pet owner to stay up to date um, you know, on the basic care. And then while they come to the vaccine clinics, they can sign up for the space and neuters or medical care if they can't afford going to their vet to have those services performed. Okay, and so this is obviously for the benefit of the pets themselves and their sort of good health and the owners because you say it's free did you say it's free yeah it's free we uh, we focus on helping low income senior disabled and homeless pet owners so a, a lot pet care as you know is is can be really expensive and especially during the pandemic we have started helping so many more uh, pet families in Santa Barbara County because they're struggling financially so it's it's to provide these services that allows the pets to stay in their homes and um, especially during tough times pets are everything to their owners yeah. I know that for my own you know how much comfort and love my pets bring me so we want to keep pets and, and their owners together for life that is great so so tell me um, how is care for paws different than um, oh I don't know say shelters or other animal organizations like that yeah, so we are not a shelter or rescue group. Uh, even I started out as a shelter volunteer oh. at about, gosh, 15, 16 years ago. And uh, this was at the Santa Barbara County Animal Services Shelter in Santa okay. Barbara. And there were so many dogs and cats. Um, we were caring for about 120 dogs on the dog side of the shelter, uh, in a shelter made for about 40 dogs. Mm. So some were euthanized and some stayed for three, four years. And it was really tough on you know, the animals, the staff, the volunteers, and, and at the county shelters in Lompoc and Santa Maria and other shelters, pets, more pets were euthanized because there just wasn't enough space and not enough homes. So Care for Paws was myself and several longtime shelter volunteers uh -huh. came together to oh. talk about what are some of the things we can do to prevent these animals from ending up homeless in the first place? So we realized that we wanted to start working directly in the community to provide things like the free space and neuters and help with vet care, assistance with pet food, just all the, the services that, uh, or resources that might otherwise make a pet owner relinquish their pet to a shelter. Wow, so this is, this is so great. So you saw a need and you had a few other folks that came alongside that also saw that need and you decided let's do something about it and you together with the, your other people you founded this Care for Paws. We did, yeah. It's, that, so well, it's, congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah, it's been, um, it's been a wild ride and lots of learning lessons. You know, as you 
I was a, my background is in journalism, so I was new to the whole nonprofit world. So have to learn a lot along the way. Um, we all have, but the same team is still together. And obviously it's grown a lot. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of us wear a lot of different hats still. Uh, we keep growing, for example, during the, so let's say the first year we started Care for Paws back in 2009, 2010. I think we altered about 200 dogs and cats, and we were very proud of that. We didn't have our mobile units at the time. So, and then now we're altering about 2,000 dogs and cats in our mobile units every year. 2,000. So that's a lot of animals. That is. Well, congratulations on that. Yeah, thank you. You got something right there. Man, you're just really, you're really growing and, and serving a whole lot of people. Yeah, we're excited about that and grateful that we're able to help. And um, on the medical side, we have grown that program quite a bit over the last five years we began to offer or since 2018 we began to offer medical services in the mobile unit as opposed to sending clients mainly to our vet clinic partners mm -hmm. that we have mm -hmm. and which saves us money and we can help so many more animals and so we went from the first year providing medical services this is anything from a dental mass removal to an exam for skin issues or an ear infection mm -hmm. could, you know wide scope of, of uh, treatments. We went from helping 700 pets to um, last year we helped 1,800 dogs and cats. So it, we've grown a lot in all aspects. So we, I would say right now in 2022 we're providing about 18,000 different uh, types of services in our mobile clinic. That is amazing. And so um, you really focus on helping people uh, who can't afford to go to the vet like a lot you know a lot, a lot of people can just take their animal to the vet but you, it seems like I heard you say you focus on people that are homeless and elderly and what what other kinds of uh, folks like that yeah so we focus basically on anyone that cannot financially afford okay, so to, anybody. To, yeah right. anybody that that is a low of income mm -hmm. that cannot afford going to their vet clinic or their veterinarian or to a local humane society to have some of these services provided. Okay. So it's basically that safety net of you may be, you know, have no money or you might be low of income, but it's not, you don't make enough money quite to go to the humane society and you yeah. cannot afford your vet um, or you don't have a vet. Most of the clients we see do not have a veterinarian because they can't afford it. So they never right, establish right, right. that uh, relationship, which we always encourage because if you have a regular vet that you go to you can prevent a lot of the illnesses that we see later mm -hmm. on so we have a lot of pets coming to us that have severe dental disease or they have a, a mass that has grown so large or um, they have a skin issue that's out of control uh -huh. so we're able to help these pets but it takes longer sometimes to treat them because they never had that preventive care gotcha gosh you know when you think back to the days when you were volunteering and seeing the problem um, and then deciding to do something about it. Okay, we're gonna found the Care for Paws. Did you have any idea that it would grow to be so big and so effective? We probably had no idea at that point. We were just hoping that we would make a dent in the pet overpopulation problem, and we really have. So um, during the pandemic, numbers have fluctuated, but overall we've seen an incredible drop so when I mentioned 120 dogs that we were caring for back in 2007, 8, 9, uh, before the pandemic there were about 15 to 20 adoptable pets in the shelter, in the same shelter. So the numbers obviously have dropped a lot and we see that wow. countywide because um, mm -hmm. another thing too is we, when we started Care for Paws, we wanted to collaborate with all the animal groups in the community oh. to, because we know that it's, it's not just Care for Paws that can solve the problem. It has to be all of us working together. So we, we work with Santa Barbara County Animal Services. We work with the local humane societies. We work with all local rescues, cat and dog rescue groups. We also partner with, uh, I would say, probably 20 uh, human, uh, human welfare groups mm -hmm. because that's how we can really reach the pet owners that that are in need in the community. So we keep, thanks to our collaborations, and uh, we grow every year. We, um, we have started a new program. We started many new programs since, since the beginning, but mm -hmm. one of them is a program for domestic violence survivors. Oh, wow. So we, it's called Safe Haven, and this was started in 2020, where we, we realized that there was a need in the community for families or family members stuck 
in an abusive situation mm -hmm. with a pet and they wouldn't leave because of the pet. Oh, gosh. So women, for example, stay in an abusive relationship for about two years longer if there's a pet involved. And a lot of times people have to leave their pets behind, which could you know, lead to you know, death or worse for that, or you know, something really horrible could happen to that pet. And so we want to prevent that. We want to keep, again, families together. And so we take in the pets uh, in foster care or boarding and we have them in our care until they can be reunited with their owners. So that way the owners can seek the family, if it's a mother and children, they can seek mm -hmm. help at uh, a shelter like Domestic Violence Solutions, which is our main partner for that program. And so yeah. we constantly look for ways to improve how we serve the community and some of the, what's, you know, what's lacking right now and then we try mm -hmm. to step in. So if, during the pandemic, we saw a tremendous need for pet food and supplies. So we went from supplying about two tons of pet food in a whole year to the community, Santa Barbara County as a whole, which mm -hmm. felt like a lot then. We went from doing two tons in a whole year to four tons per week. Oh my gosh. So it's a lot. <laughs> wow. So wh how do you get all this food? So we actually, this was obviously not budgeted for or anything because who could have predicted right, a pandemic. Right, right. But we started paying a lot of money, about $10,000 of pet food every month. And then, but then we also got a lot of donations. We got grants to help cover the, the mm -hmm. and donations to, to um, cover the pet food costs. So we were very fortunate that we were able to pull this off. And our double, our, I'm sorry, our, our budget doubled during the pandemic because the need was so great in every oh. area of what we Gosh. do. So we were kind of the, uh, you know, we were the, the organization that really stayed in the community. We are always focused on being directly in the community to support those that need us the most. Mm -hmm. So we, um, some of our partners had to close down because of COVID, but we made a commitment to stay. And that was, I'm really glad that we did. And I'm so grateful for our team that they were, you know, open to, they worked hard. They worked hard. As I yeah. told you, we jumped the numbers. We went from helping about 7,000 pet families in need to about 20,000 in a whole year. Wow. So the growth was tremendous. And so, yeah, overall, we've just, we keep growing. We keep finding the n different uh, areas where we could uh, grow a little more. And so with the pet food, we now continu continue to distribute about two tons of food every week countywide. Gosh. Well, and don't, uh, don't I remember that you also um, work with different businesses and other groups to raise or collect food for you or do a food drive or something like that? We do, yeah. So we have lots of business partners and we're so grateful for them and also uh, non nonprofit partners that help collect food. Mm -hmm. So community members that want to donate can go and drop off food at these different locations. Oh. So for example, Santa Barbara County Animal, Animal Services has three shelter locations and uh -huh. so people can go to those locations and drop off food. We have advanced veterinary specialists here in Santa Barbara. We have La Cumbre Feed, we have Plaza Deli in La Cumbre Plaza. Uh, so, so lots of different locations. And we also then have their uh, businesses that call, reach, us, reach out to us and ask if they could do a food drive for us. And of course, we never turn that down. So yeah. we just, for example, Deckers here oh. in Goleta. Oh my gosh. They did a big uh, fundraiser for us this, uh, you know, they do that every year during their week of caring. Oh. So the employees donate food and, and funds so that we can uh, supply that into the, to pet owners in need in the community. So it's, it's really community supporting community, which has been wonderful to see. Oh gosh, that is wonderful. So um, as you look to the future, what do you see as some needs that you want to address at some point? Well, actually, we are uh, living the future right now <laughs> because we, as an organization, always wanted to grow outside Santa Barbara County. Oh. Um, but it's been, we wanted to make sure we took care of our own backyard first. Sure. Now we actually just expanded uh, this year to San Luis Obispo County. So we're wow. only for now bringing our mobile clinic services there. So the vaccine clinics and the space and neuters. So uh, we're collaborating, collaborating with two nonprofits in San Luis Obispo County oh. to pull this off. And it's a project called Snip and Chip Slow. <laughs> so it's all about uh, spaying and neutering and vaccinating yeah. and microchipping pets to keep them in their homes and to reduce the number of animals that end up in shelters. Yeah. So it's a big undertaking, but we're excited because we're, you know, we're getting there. We're, we're able to expand and we also, we really want to work with other counties and communities to show them uh, some way, different ways you can 
uh, you can do the same thing and the same yeah. work in the same model that we've used here in Santa Barbara County because we know that it works. So we call that our community uh, community consulting outreach program. Mm -hmm. or co I'm sorry, community outreach consulting program. Uh -huh. And uh, so uh, we've we're consulting some agencies or nonprofits down in LA, for example. Wow. Just in, in different ways so yeah. that we can spread the knowledge that we've gained over the years. So you know, I here's what I I just love is that you and your team, you see an issue, a problem, uh, something that needs to be addressed, and you just roll up your sleeves and get in and do it, and then when it's successful, you share it with other people. Yeah, we really, I feel like we are successful at that, and uh, we're, we're, we're never, we, ne we never stay still, I would say that, from, this, yeah. from the get-go. We've grown very fast, and we're now up to almost a, a million and a half dollar budget compared to prior to the pandemic when it was about 600,000. Oh. So, but we're, I feel we're efficient at fundraising and you know, writing grants and raising donations. And obviously we need as much support as possible financially to keep doing what we're doing. Right. I really feel like our, our programs are the solution to keeping pets healthy and in their homes. And, and I, the community really recognizes this mm -hmm. um, and especially since the pandemic where we grew so much uh, people are in the community are seeing that this is a this is really a, a problem-solving group if you will yes yes exactly and you're a nonprofit 501c3 people can make tax-deductible donations probably on your website huh? they can yes yeah. so our website is careforpost.org and you can hit a button on any of the pages that says donate. <laughs> so there's a way to give financially. There's even an Amazon wish list where people can oh. order food. They can shop from home oh, and, and the food good. will get sent to us. So there, there are many different ways to give. And um, we we have started a, a to grow our planned giving program. Oh. Um, so for people who want to include us, you know, in the will, in their estate planning in the future, um, you can donate your car uh, and give it to us. You know, there's so many different ways you can give. Good for you. Wow, that's really, a, that's good. You're thinking ahead with the planned giving. That's, that's wonderful because a lot of people want to do that. They see the, the need for it. And with your organization, I can see that they would, if they care about animals, yeah. that they would want to leave you a planned gift. Yeah, we hope so. We hope that that program um, keeps growing because it really would allow us more security yes. uh, financially so that we know that we can keep growing and stay sustain sustainable over the years. And so, all right, so you talked about Amazon and the, the food drives and all. So do you say, well, here's the kind of dog food that we'd like? Is there, is there certain kinds or can people just bring any kind of dog food that they Yeah, have? we ask for unopened bags of dog oh. food, <laughs> ideally, but uh, we will accept uh, donations usually of, of any type of food, um, um, dog and cat food, uh, kibble and, and wet food or canned food. Okay, so any it's kind. Great. Any kind, yeah. We also accept um, unused blankets, like the little fleece blanket oh. that we could use for during our mobile clinics and um, pet jackets. We help a lot of unsheltered pet owners and their pets live outside with their owners so they get jackets and blankets from us and oh. and speaking of we do we provide uh, thanks to one of our generous donors Bill Basilico we provide grooming for dogs of unsheltered community members oh. so once a month at Alameda Park we bring on every first Thursday we bring in uh, our partner um, Ace Mobile Grooming uh -huh. and they will give baths and nail trimming to to dogs and, and even cats sometimes uh, that live on the streets with their owners. So it's, it's a wonderful great. service. I hope somebody's covering that with social media or something. Wouldn't that make a nice post? Well, yes, we, we're trying. And we're, yeah, we're trying to grow our social media presence as well. So we hope that uh, viewers will go and, and check out our Facebook and Instagram pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so we have a little over a minute left. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience? I think I just, I'm, I feel very grateful that we have a community that's so supportive. Santa Barbara yeah. County, and even now we're working in Slow County, we, we, we see that the support that's out there from people who want to help make a difference. And maybe they can't volunteer, maybe they can't be directly involved, but they donate financially so that we are able to do the job. Mm -hmm. And that it's, it's I'm, I'm proud of our team, um, everything that we're able to do on a very, with a small staff and, and our volunteer crew. and. Um, overall, it's just a lot of gratitude that we are able to work the way we do in the community. Yeah, 
That is great. And what a team you have. How many are on your team? We have uh, actually only th three full-time staff, and mm -hmm. uh, then we have our vet clinics crew and a couple of administrative um, staff members as well. They all do a phenomenal job because we get so many calls and emails every day. So, um, yeah, we have a great crew. I think about 13 people that are on staff and then um, a great volunteer crew. And many of them have been apart from the very beginning since oh, 2009. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah. So are some of them actual veterinarians then? We have, uh, well, we have our veterinarian, we have a couple of veterinarians that work in our mobile units. Uh, okay. And then um, the volunteers mainly are uh, just animal lovers who want to make a difference. And they work so hard. And so they're, we're all co-funders, basically, because we've been there from the beginning. Animal lovers who want to make a difference unite. Yes. Make a financial exactly. donation. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Isabel, for all of your great work and your vision. Oh, my. Thank you. Yeah, like I said, I'm proud of, of what we've been able to accomplish. And thank you for having me today. Yes, my pleasure. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.